This is lesson 4.4, four, page 196, scatter plots and lines of fit. In this lesson, you will learn how to interpret a scatter plot, how to identify correlations between data sets, and how to use lines of fit to model data. Let's talk about a scatter plot first. What is it? A scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. The two data sets are graphed as ordered pairs in a coordinate plane. So when you take ordered pairs and graph them, you are creating a scatter plot. So scatter plot's easy. It's just taking a table of ordered pairs and plotting them on graph paper. Scatter plots can show trends in data. That's the point of them. Let's look at how we interpret a scatter plot. So this problem says the scatter plot shows the amounts x in grams of sugar. So you notice the x is sugar here. X sugar. And the number y of calories. You can see y is the calories. In 10 smoothies. Now I want you to notice when it says 10 smoothies, look at this graph. It has 10 points. There are 10 ordered pairs that have been graphed. That's what we mean by 10 smoothies. There's 10 of these. How many calories are in the smoothie that contains 56 grams of sugar? Well, let's read that. Let me take a highlighter and try to point that out. So, 56 grams would be about right here. And if I go straight up, that means that smoothie must have had about 270 calories. How many grams of sugar are in the smoothie that contains 320 calories? Let me find 320 calories on my graph. It's right here. Okay, so that smoothie must have had 70 grams of sugar. What trend, or what tend, I should say, what tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases? So there is a trend. Do you notice? As we add more sugar to the drink or to the smoothie, the calories seem to get bigger. In fact, I could kind of draw a line to indicate that. Okay? You can see a pattern here. As the sugar increases, the calories also increase. What I'd like you to do real quick is pause the video and answer these questions here. Okay, you're back. How many calories are in the smoothie that contains 51 grams of sugar? Well, 51 grams of sugar would be about here, and that looks to me like it's a smoothie that would have 260 calories. And then, how many grams of sugar are in a smoothie that contains 250 calories? So, here's 250 calories, and that smoothie looks like it was about 52 calories grams then. Let's talk about how you identify correlations between data sets. So first of all, what's a correlation? A correlation is a relationship between data sets. You can use scatter plots to describe the correlation between data. So a positive correlation is when as x increases, y increases. There's another way of thinking about that. You see it off to the left. You can think of positive correlation. Positive correlation is when you have a positive slope on your graph. You can see this is definitely a positive slope. It's rising from left to right. You could also have a negative correlation. Another way of thinking of negative correlation is that you have a negative slope, which you can see here, definitely a negative slope. And there's also graphs that would have no correlation. There's no apparent pattern with points. So when you look at these two graphs below, you can see for this graph, the age and vehicle's own. A person's age doesn't seem to have a correlation with the number of vehicles owned. There's no correlation in this particular graph. But now if we take the daily average daily temperature and compare it to how many cold coats are sold per day, you notice as the temperature rises, 
the number of coats being sold is dropping. So this would have a negative correlation to this graph. I would like you to try. They want you to make a scatter plot of each of these and then tell whether the data has a positive, negative, or no correlation. If you look on plan book today at the bottom, I have a link where you can download a sheet of graph paper to do this. Go ahead and try that. Okay, so for the first set of data, I made a graph. So let's look at that. First thing I had to do is label my graph. This graph is about attendance in thousands versus temperature in Fahrenheit. Here's my attendance. Here's my temperature. I had to pick a scale to fit this on. Okay? And remember, the attendance is in thousands, so this stands for 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on. Okay. There were eight sets of points on my table. You can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points plotted then. So there's the table of eight points. Now, you can see here, this would definitely have a positive correlation. I can kind of see a trend here where these points are kind of, I'm just going to draw a little line on here. You can see it's kind of rising. As the temperature rises, the number of people attending is increasing too. For the second table, this table compared the value of your car in thousands to the age of the car. So here's my value in thousands and here's the age of the car. So I had to pick an appropriate scale and label my graph. Again, there were eight data sets on this, so I have eight points after I plotted these. You can definitely see a negative correlation to the data. This is definitely a negative correlation. Okay? And if I was to draw a line, I mean, it's pretty clear as the age of the car increases, the price is definitely declining. That gets us to the end of the video here, which is going to go through how we use lines to fit and model data. So first of all, when data show a positive or negative correlation, you can model the trend in the data using a line of fit. A line of fit is a line drawn on a scatter plot that is close to most of the data points. So I would definitely get that in your notes. That's important. Line of fit is a line drawn on a scatter plot that is close to most of the data points. Now, another name for line of fit is a trend line. So if you see trend line, that means line of fit. If you see line of fit, that means trend line. This is how we make a line of fit to model data. And I would write these four things down. Um, I'm just going to quickly do a quick highlight here. I would pause the video and get these four things. You need to make a scatter plot of the data. You decide whether the data can be modeled by a line. Okay, what this means is, is does it have a positive correlation or a negative correlation? If it does, you can draw a line to model the data. When you draw your line, make sure it appears to fit the data closely. There should be approximately as many points above the line as below it. And then finally, the last step. Write an equation using two points on, on the line. These points do not have to actually represent data pairs, but they must lie on the line of fit. Pause the video, write those down. Okay, and we're going to do this. They do another example in the book. We're going to do this to the last problem that you just tried. So we're going to do this right now. So here was the last problem we did, the value of the car versus his age, and here was my data. Now, first of all, it had a negative correlation, so I can definitely draw a line of fit. I did that in blue. You notice there looks to be maybe one, two, maybe three points below the data, and one, two, three above. You know, my line of, data, my line of fit, my trend line should be about like that, where half the data is above it, half below it. It should be as accurate as possible. Now, pick two points on that line of fit. So I tried to look here carefully. It looked like the point 125 was on the line. And right here, it looked like the line went right at 612. OK? 
Okay, now, I want to write an equation for the line of fit. So the first thing I got to figure out is what is the slope? So I'm going to get the slope. So I took my y values, 25 and 12, and my x values, 1 and 6, and I'm using the slope formula to get negative 2.6. There's my slope. Now, I can use point slope form to write an equation. My slope is negative 2.6, and you can see the point I used. I used the point 125. I put a 1 in for x sub 1 and a 25 in for y sub 1. I distributed, and then I added 25 to each side, and here's my equation. Now, you notice below, I rewrote it just to make it nice. This is value and age. so. X is age, so I put an A for age, and I put V for value. You don't have to do this, but I thought that's kind of nice. It makes it clear that this is my age, this is my value. Now, I want you to notice a couple things on my equation. My slope is negative 2.6, so, so what that's saying is every year of age we add, the value of the car is losing about $2,600. That's what 2.6 means. Remember, this is value in thousands. So every year of age, we're losing about $2,600. And now here's the next thing. Look at the y-intercept, 27.6. My graph looks like it's, it's almost right there. What does that mean? That means when you have a brand new car at age zero, a brand new car is about $27,600 in cost. That's what the y-intercept's telling me in this equation. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.